Hi, I'm John from BetterDoneYourself.com. Today I want to make some rye bread. I'm going to be looking at a uh, New York style deli rye. It's uh, about 70% rye flour, so it's by no means a whole wheat loaf. It's more of a white bread, but it, uh, at 65% hydration, it gives you a nice um, chewy crumb, nice tight crumb, uh, great for sandwiches, um, excellent for toasting. This is about a six to eight hour project. Um, you really have to kind of play it by ear when you're watching the yeast work the, the dough and get your rises and your, your proofing done. So set aside a, a good day to work on this bread and I promise you'll, you'll come out with something delicious. Here's the ingredients that you'll need for your rye bread. First, measure out the ingredients for your sponge. Eight ounces of bread flour, seven ounces of rye flour, one teaspoon of instant yeast, 1.2 ounces of sugar and 1 ounce of molasses. 26 ounces of water at 100 degrees. For the flour mixture, measure out 25 ounces of bread flour, 1 and a half teaspoons of instant yeast, 1 ounce of caraway seeds, 0.6 ounces of salt. You'll also need 1 tablespoon of vegetable oil. Once you've got all your ingredients weighed out, you can start to add them to your mixer. So we'll put in the rye flour, the bread flour, the sugar, the molasses, the yeast, and the warm water. We'll go ahead and mix this. Scrape down the bowl. And we'll give this a good mix to get some air in the batter. And that's our sponge. Let's add the remaining ingredients, the oil. The remaining ingredients get piled on top. It gives your sponge a nice blanket so that the top doesn't dry out while it's rising. We'll let this rise for four or five hours. All right, this looks great. The sponge is doing really well. It's blossomed up through the, the blanket of flour and we've got a nice foam on top. Let's go ahead and put the mixing hook in and we'll mix this for 10 minutes. Start it slow at first to incorporate all the flour and then we can turn up the speed.
can see how much gluten is formed. This is great. Nice smooth dough, nice elasticity. Let's let this rise. I'm going to put this in the proofing bucket. To check your dough for the proper amount of gluten production, you can do what's called a window pane test. Just take a small piece of dough and stretch it out between your fingers. And with the proper amount of gluten formation, you can literally make a window pane of dough. And it should stretch out quite a bit before it begins to tear. I think we've got ample gluten. We can move on to the next step. Go ahead and put the dough into the proof. Got a little bit of olive oil on the sides of this proofing bucket. Keep the dough from sticking. Get this flattened out. And we can see we've got about two quarts of dough. I'll go ahead and let that rise to just below four quarts and I know I'm ready to put this in the pans. Once the bread's completely risen, we can go ahead and shape it into the loaf pans. Give the loaf pans a good spritz of oil so that baked bread doesn't stick to the pans. We'll punch this down, cut it in half, and shape it. Try to flatten it out and cut it about in half. And we'll let this rise again until it's just about half an inch above the loaf pans and we can go ahead and put it in the oven. Alright, the oven's up to temperature. The bread is got its second proof done. We're ready to bake. Let's get these in the oven. Alright, it's been 20 minutes in the oven. I can smell it. Let's see where we are. Got a nice golden top. These look great. Sounds crisp. Yeah, we're at 203. Let's pull these loaves. These are going to be delicious. So these look great. Let's go ahead and get them out of the pans so they can cool. Very, very hot. Hot, hot loaves. I'm going to go ahead and let these cool to about room temperature. Don't cut into them while they're still hot. The steam is contained within the crust and it's cooking and gelatinizing the, the bread and, and making a nice chewy crumb. Don't cut into these yet. Let's wait. Wait about half an hour. All right, the moment of truth. The bread's been cooling for about 40, 45 minutes and it's come down to about room temperature. We don't want to slice it when it's too warm. But we can go ahead and cut into it and it looks absolutely perfect. <laughs> 